Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and this is a video on how to solve the Rubik's Tesseract. This is the four-dimensional analog of the Rubik's Cube. Uh, that is a 3 by 3 by 3 by 3. This is the second video in the series, um, and in this video I'm going to cover uh, commutators and how to solve the individual pieces on this puzzle with commutators. If the motion that you're seeing here on this puzzle looks confusing or you're not comfortable with it, um, you should probably go ahead and watch my introductory video first to sort of get a feel for what you're looking at here. Um, so first, uh, I'll do a recap. Because this is a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube or a hypercube, um, instead of having six sides or six faces like, uh, like a Rubik's Cube has, this, this has eight cells. And so instead of having a two-dimensional square face, um, this puzzle has eight three-dimensional cubic uh, faces or, or what are known as cells. Um, and so you can see them here. You only see seven here because there's a, an eighth one that's uh, hidden in the back. So let me show that to you. So that one right there, the red one, that disappears. And the reason it's not there is because um, although the view in this puzzle is sort of exploded, the purple face right here, for the purple face of this, this purple uh, cell, is touching the yellow one, so that, that's that's the same piece right there, the, the yellow and the purple piece. Um, and of course this side is touching the brown, and this over here, that's touching. Um, and so they're, they're all touching each other, well except for uh, the purple, this purple is not touching uh, uh, this light blue here because uh, they're opposite faces. But as you can see, the, the red cell is touching the backs of this cell this cell and this cell and so on and so forth. So it's touching the backs of uh, these six cells. It's just not touching that one. So as you can imagine, it's sort of um, turned wrong side out or, or, or the, the projection causes it to sort of look inside out. Um, and if it were being drawn, it, it, would, uh, it would sort of block the, the view into the inside of this puzzle. And so a, a move like that, that's just a, that's just a four dimensional reorientation. It's not actually a move. Um, and because these are cubes and they're fixed in space, um, well, relative to each other, that is. They have a center uh, square, center cube to them. Um, you can see it right there and right there. And that center cube is what you'll solve to. So when you scramble this puzzle, the center cubes are still um, all solved relative to each other, just like the, the core, the, the six uh, center uh, pieces on a Rubik's cube. So uh, to continue the recap, uh, this puzzle has the, the one color centers here that, that are already solved. And then it has these two color face center pieces. Um, so there's one, there's one, um, here's the, the purple, green one, and so on and so forth. And then it has the, the three color, the three sticker um, middle edge pieces. So here's the teal, yellow, purple one. Here's the teal, green, yellow one. And then here's the green, teal, purple one. And then here's the, the purple, green, and we know the red face is on the outside. We can't see it here. I'll, I'll bring it in here. And there we go. See the, the purple, green, red. And we'll take the red face out, and there it is. Um, and so uh, the, that's the, the, the three color middle edge pieces. And then there are four color corners, so here's one right here. The, the teal, purple, green, yellow piece. Here's the green, teal, light blue, yellow one right there. Um, and so like if you look at this one, so this is the purple, yellow, green, and then we know it's red. So see, purple, green, red, yellow corner piece. And so there are 16. Uh, 16 of those on this puzzle, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, there's eight around this cube, and then there's eight around the red cube. And so they're pretty well interconnected pieces. And because they have four stickers, they have quite a few orientations available to them. So the whole point of this video is to discuss how to solve these pieces and orient these pieces using commutators. I'm not going to be demoing the shortest possible commutators um, in part because I haven't even found them. I, I found some pretty short ones, but I have um, 
don't have a lot of intuition on this puzzle as to whether or not they're the actual the shortest possible ones. And two, um, I, I'm going to emphasize nesting commutators. So you first you're going to figure out how to solve the two color pieces and then the three color pieces and the four color pieces, but you're going to use the, the routines that um, got you the two color pieces to then solve the three color pieces, and then you're going to use that routine to figure out how to solve the four color pieces. Um, and so we're going to nest um, we're going to nest our, our understanding, the, the, the knowledge that we already have, to, to build up to, to solve the, the, the higher and higher and higher uh, uh, colored pieces. Um, and this, this technique is going to apply to higher dimensional puzzles too, uh, although I'm not really going to cover how. So uh, let's talk about uh, these, these two color pieces. Um, they're quite simple to solve, so a simple 1-1 one, one commutator will get the job done. And, and this is indeed the shortest possible commutator for these puzzles. Uh, for, for these pieces. And so if you do something like this, that's just a 1-1 one, one commutator. It works just like how you do in, like, a, say, a Pyramix crystal or something. And it will loop on a 3-cycle. Um, so this was the first move. So let's take a look at that again. I'll reset this puzzle. If this was the first move, we're taking the teal dark blue piece and we're putting it right there. We're putting it where the purple teal piece was. And now, so we put the purple teal piece right there, you know. Um, now we're going to take uh, this purple cell and turn it down. So what we're doing is we're taking the yellow purple piece and we're putting it in that place. That's, so that's Y. Now we're going to undo X. Now we're going to undo Y. And we will have created a three cycle. And we will, so we will have taken the teal dark blue piece and we will have put it right here. So teal dark blue. And we will have taken the teal purple piece, and we will have put it uh, right here. So there's the teal purple piece. And then we will have taken the yellow purple piece, and we will have put it right there. So you can see the, the yellow purple piece right there. Um, and so that is a three cycle that will solve the two color pieces. And what it won't get you is it won't change their orientations. So these pieces, uh, if you can't tell already, they, they do have an orientation available to them. Um, two orientations available to them. Well, they actually have eight, but you know that's an indistinguishable orientation. We're just rotating it in place. Um, so, how are we going to be able to change their orientation? Well, let's take a look. Um, so we can do like an orientation changing commutator instead. Um, and so let's just change the orientation, um, ignoring what else we break. We'll just change the orientation of this teal yellow piece right here. Um, and so I think we can do something like turn it down. Turn that up. Okay, so now we've got it sort of backwards, right? And then if we do that, now the teal yellow piece is in essentially backwards. Um, oh, of course, we broke a whole bunch of other stuff on this puzzle, too. Um, but we could do something like, uh, will that work? No, it won't work. Okay, so, uh, so let's see how to change the orientation of two pieces without breaking any of the other pieces. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll break all the non two color pieces because we don't really care about those. Um, so let's see, first thing we want to do is we want to change the orientation of say this piece right here. So we'll flip it up, flip that over. Now we could bring it down in place like that, but um, we need to, you know, this is broken. So what we're going to do is do that first and then we'll bring it down. So now we've put it back in place. We've taken the purple teal piece and we've sort of put it in backwards and we have this piece, like the blue teal piece, for example, is still good. Um, so now we'll move the blue teal piece up into its spot. Now we have to undo the orientation change. And so that would be something to the effect of this. Okay, and then we need to, so once we've done that, we need to undo the twist that we put in that piece. And as you can see, we changed the orientation of the blue teal piece and the teal purple piece. They haven't changed position, they've only changed orientation, and no other two color face center piece on this puzzle is, is broken. Um, and so that's one pretty intuitive way that you can change the orientation of a pair of pieces. So when you're solving this puzzle, and it starts out scrambled like uh, starts out scrambled like this, you know, it looks like a total mess. First you're gonna identify, okay, well, you know, that's the green cell center and that's the purple cell center, so then you'd look for the green purple. Um, two color face center piece, so it might be right. Nope. Okay. Well, you know. Anyways, you'll look for it, and I'm I'm not going to probably find it on this puzzle um, in time. 
let's see. Yep, there it is. Um, so we should be able to do something like that. Okay, and so now we have the green purple one in place as you can see. Um, but what you'll do is you will solve you will solve this puzzle intuitively and you'll place as many of the face centers as you can. So you'll first you know place like all of the face centers between uh, this center cell and the outer cell. So all six of those. And you'll just place them you're just using intuition. And then you'll place uh, these face centers between the, these cells. And you should be able to do all of these without with intuition. Um, but what you'll have left is you'll have the face centers along the backs here. Um, and those are the face centers that are in between the red cell and all the rest of the cells. And those will be a, a little bit more challenging to place. And basically, it'll be very difficult to place those intuitively. So you'll want to fall back on a three cycle. So you'll want to do the, the three cycle that we, uh, that we came up with here that does the three cycle of that piece, that piece, and that piece. Um, and then the only trick, and I know you're about to hear parody, and don't don't worry. So the only trick is that you can run into a parody, and this is a very very p simple parody to solve. So what can happen is you can have the the uh, you can have two pieces that are swapped positions, and and because a three cycle is an even permutation, and swapping two pieces is an odd permutation, there's no way to use three cycles to fix um, an, an odd permutation. Or, yeah, there's no way to use a three cycle to fix an odd permutation. And so you could have like the purple teal piece. It could actually be like swapped positions with the green teal piece. And all the other ones would be solved. And the reason that can arrive, it, arise is because a four cycle, which is just a single twist of this cell. So you can see that um, when we do a single twist, we cycle this one to here, this one to here, this one to there, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and a four cycle is, is an odd permutation. And so you can't solve a four cycle with only three cycles. And so if you do run into the situation where you have two face centers swapped, what you'll want to do is you'll want to solve it with, a, with one twist and then a three cycle. Um, and so let's say, let's pretend for a second that the, uh, that the teal green piece is actually located right there and that the purple, the, the purple uh, teal piece is actually located right there. So imagine that these two are swapped. If we do that, we will have solved the teal green piece. Now, the purple uh, teal piece that should be right here is actually going to be right here. Notice that there's now a three cycle necessary to solve this puzzle. We need to solve the purple teal piece and the uh, light blue teal piece and the brown teal piece, and we'll need to do a three cycle. And so I think we should be able to just do that right now. So let's see. We want to do this, this, this. This so that should have done a three cycle. Um, oh no, you know what? I forgot to do a setup move. Okay, so let's do that again. So we're gonna fix fix the parity, and I know you, that you don't see the parity here yet. Um, and remember the three cycle that we did uh, cycle this piece, this piece, and that piece. But we want to cycle this piece, this piece, and this piece. So we need to do a setup move. Okay, now we need to do our three cycle. And then we need to undo our setup move. And ignoring the fact that the orientation of the teal light blue piece is wrong, and the, uh, well, the, yeah, the, ignoring that problem, um, you can see, or ignoring the orientations in general, you can see that the um, teal green piece and the purple teal piece are now swapped positions. And so we created a parity, and we did it in like seven moves. Um, and we could probably do it, well, and I don't think we could do it in fewer moves. But it's, it's very, very simple to solve that problem. Um, and once you solve the face center parity on this puzzle, if you run into it, you have a 50-50 chance of running into it. If you solve the face center parity on this puzzle, then you won't run into any other parity cases on, on the puzzle at all. Um, because that will force all of the other pieces to be nicely in the their their appropriate uh, well in, in the appropriate uh, permutation parities. Um, so I've demoed how to solve the two color pieces here. Now let's talk about how to solve the three color pieces. Um, and again, because uh, this video is going to emphasize building up commutators off of the previous ones, I'm going to do our previous commutator here. So that was our three cycle. 
of this piece, this piece, and this piece. And now we're going to look for things that are isolated. Actually, you know what? Let me. Uh, so let's do it this way. This, 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 this. There we go. Um, now let's look for things that are isolated. Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to solve the three color pieces here. So th that three color piece is, uh, well, it's sort of isolated, right? So we could do that and put a different three color piece into its place. So let's do that. Now we have to undo. And then undo. And we did not, oh, we did, did we? Oh, um, what did we do? Edit, reset. Oh, okay, well this this is the reason why it didn't work, because there's a broken face center right there, so we can't just flip that around. Um, we need to find something that's isolated better than that. So take a look over here. This three color piece right here, the blue, purple, teal piece, that's totally isolated. We can do that, and we didn't break anything else. There's no face centers to worry about or anything like that. So let's do that. Now we need to undo. And now we need to undo the Y. And we will have created a three cycle of, in, in 10 moves, we will have created a four, one, three cycle, or rather it's a sort of a nested one, one, comma, one, um, 10 move uh, commutator sequence. And we will have done a three cycle of the dark blue, teal, light blue piece, the purple, dark blue, teal piece. Oops, don't want to click on that. And also the light blue, teal yellow piece and so as we can see the the light blue yellow teal piece went right here so it went into the purple teal dark blue piece and then the purple teal dark blue piece got cycled to right here and then the light blue teal dark blue piece got cycled to right here so as you can see that that's a three cycle of, of our three color pieces um, and it's quite easy to execute um, and it's only 10 moves. So now we need to figure out, oh, you know what we need to do is we need to figure out how to change the orientation of these pieces. So as you can see, you know, like it has these individual um, middle edge center pieces, these three color pieces have an orientation available to them. So if we do something like this, so we need to isolate a piece. So I think the easiest way to isolate a piece on this puzzle is to just do a three cycle. And so we're going to do the three cycle that, that we found earlier. Oops. And then undo. And so now we have isolated a three cycle of these pieces. So now what we can do is we can actually change the orientation of this one, for example. So we do that. And as you can see, the teal and the light blue stickers on it get swapped, but the yellow sticker doesn't move at all. Now if we undo, this is again an orientation changing commutator. And now we just got to undo our, our, our Y part. And what, we, what have we done here? So we changed the orientation of the yellow, light blue, teal piece. So we, it, it sort of flipped around in place. And we changed the orientation of the purple, dark blue, teal piece. It also flipped around in, in orientation. And pretty straightforward. So there's actually a different type of orientation change that you can do in these three color pieces also. So here we, we kept a sticker fixed. Um, and we just sort of twisted it around. Um, there's another one, and that's a three cycle, you know, so we can sort of rotate it in place this way instead of flipping it around. Um, so how can we do that? Well, let's take a look how we can rotate one of these pieces in, in, in its place in the first place, ignoring what it'll break. So I think what we can do is we can do something like we're going to bring, we're going to rotate the yellow, teal, light blue piece in place. So I think first we need to bring it up. So now it's right here. It's right, it's at the, um, yellow teal and then we can't see it it's on the red it's on the red cell over here so there it is so now then we're going to bring it around and then we got to so it's now it's right there and then we got to bring it back down and so we put it back in place 
ignoring all the other stuff we broke, um, we put it back in place in a different orientation. So now the yellow, teal, uh, light blue piece is, is rotated, um, well, from this view, it's rotated counterclockwise a little bit. Um, and we're going to use that to change the orientation of, of two of these pieces in, in a slightly different way. So let's do our, uh, let's do our three cycle again. Okay, now we got to rotate this piece around in its in its in its place. So, um, bring it up there, and then uh, use the red cell to change it, and then uh, flip it back around, and then take the red cell out. Okay, now we need to undo. So we we changed its orientation. We did not affect the uh, other parts of the three cycle. Um, at least I hope we didn't. So now we're going to undo the the three cycle. Undo that. Okay, now we need to undo. Now we need to undo its orientation change. So I think first the thing we need to do is we need to flip it around so it's right there. Bring the red center in. Now we need to flip that back, and that should have done it. So now we now we've changed the orientation of this piece and this piece. Notice how they're still in the appropriate location, but now instead of flipping around in place, they've sort of rotated in place, and so that's a different way to change their orientation. So there's only one piece left on this puzzle, and boy oh boy, the commutator I'm about to show you is just a monster. And I've tried recording this video actually two times now, and screwed up this video two times trying to do this, the, this particular commutator. I just, for some reason, it's really hard to speak about it and do it at the same time. So hopefully I get it right. But again, um, we're going to build it off of our previous knowledge. So let's let's take a look. So let's do our three color three cycle. Oops, wrong. That's one of the reasons why I keep on messing this damn video up. Okay. So now we've done our three cycle, the 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 three color three cycle. Now we're going to be looking for a four color piece that's isolated. Now. It turns out that there is no four color piece that is isolated just yet, but there's there's a couple that are almost isolated. So if we try to, so there's a four color piece, there's a four color piece, there's four color piece. So if we do that, we actually rotate three four color pieces. Because that's going to make a mess. That's not going to get us a three cycle. And we can't really do we can't really do something like that because that affects two of the four color pieces, and it also affects the it also affects one of the the three color pieces. Um, but it turns out that uh, there is nothing in, there's nothing isolated in this red, this red uh, cell, it can turn freely and it doesn't affect anything on, the, on this puzzle. Um, and so the trick we're going to use here, let me spin it back around to an orientation we understand, um, is that we can do a three move sequence. So we can do this. So now there's a four color piece that's sticking out and it's totally isolated. And then we can bring this down. So I'm going to hold down, this is the third layer of the centerpiece. It's, it's actually turning the, the red cell even though you can't see it. And then we're going to undo it. Okay, so now we have actually replaced, we've replaced that four color piece with one from up here. And let me, so let me reset that. And let's talk about how this commutator is made. Um, it's a 10-1 commutator, or 10-3 commutator. So we do this, 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 this. So that's the four commutator. Then we do a one. Then we undo our four. Okay. So that's the ten. Now here comes. So that's that. All those ten moves. That's the X part. Now here we're going to do a three move Y part. Okay. So that's the three move Y part. Now we have to undo our ten move X part. So that should be something to the effect of this. Then that, 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 and then that, 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 that. Okay, now we need to undo our Y part, our three move Y part, and so it should be this, bring it back, and we should have created the three cycle in the four color pieces. And so we did. Um, we created the three cycle in the teal, light blue, orange, 
yellow piece and the teal, orange, yellow, blue piece, dark blue piece, and then also the teal, purple, dark blue, orange piece. And so you can see that the, um, the teal, orange, uh, purple, yellow piece went, uh, it went over here. So it went to um, the teal, orange, yellow, purple piece. So it, it cycled this way. So it went, took that piece and put it there, took this piece and put it there, and took this piece and put it over here. And so we created a three cycle in the four color pieces. Now, uh, I'm going to have to go over that again and again and again because I want to talk about how to change the orientations of these pieces. Um, so if you're not following me just yet, hopefully uh, by the time you're done seeing how to change the orientations of these pieces, you will be able to follow me. Um, okay, so what we want to do, let's, so let's reset this, is these four color pieces, if we rotate like that, that will have not have changed its position. The, the, so this, uh, this light blue sticker will still be in place. We need to change the position, we need to change its orientation to, you know, move the, the um, orange piece to here, the yellow piece to there, and the teal piece there, you know, sort of a three cycle of its colors. And so we should be able to do a, a three cycle of its colors by just doing something like that. So let's do our, let's do our four color three cycle again. Um, so let's see if I can get it right. I always, always, always mess this up. It's really hard to do a video and talk at the same time. Um, and then do that, okay. So then do our three moves. Okay, now undo our 10. Do our three moves. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so now we've done our three cycle. The cool part is, is we can actually rotate this, and we won't affect any of the other two pieces. So if we did three cycle of this corner, this corner, and this corner, if we rotate that one in place, we didn't affect that one or that one. Okay. Now we're going to undo our monstrous twenty-six move. Uh, we're going to undo the monstrous twenty-six move three cycle that we had. Um, so we're going to do that, and we will have twisted two pieces. Um, so how do we undo this? Well, I think we do this, 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 then we do okay. Then we undo that. Now we need to undo this. Oh, and I have clearly messed this up. Okay, I, let me let's let's give that another try. Wow. Okay. Um, so we need to do our corner three cycle. Okay, that's the first part. Then we need to do. I messed that up again. Um, okay, I, what am I doing wrong? I can't even tell what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so now we've done our, our corner three cycle. Now we need to twist this piece in place. Okay, then we need to undo it. So to undo it, I think we do this.
Okay. And then we need to undo the twist. And so what we did was we did the corner four cycle. And I know that was a hell of a lot of moves. It was 54 moves. So we did our corner four cycle, which is uh, a lot of moves. And then we did a twist of a corner. And then we undid our corner three cycle. And then we undid the twist of the corner. And we ended up twisting two corners here. So we ended up twisting this one. So we ended up twisting the, the, the teal, orange, uh, light blue, and yellow corner. And we ended up twisting the uh, teal, yellow, orange, purple corner. And so you can see that their position didn't change, but we did rotate them in place. And so this one rotated along this axis, and this one rotated along this axis. Um, and you can see via setup moves, if you can twist along one of the axes, then you can twist along any of the axes. And so that should allow you to, uh, to reorient these, these corners however you'd like. Now, there's a, there's a little bit of a catch. Um, so first of all, when you're solving this puzzle, you can, you, you can never have a single four color corner twisted along just one axis. So you can never end up with just one that looks like this, where there's a three cycle of, of three of the stickers, but one of the stickers is correct. Um, you can either have uh, none of the stickers correct or all of the stickers correct. You, you can't have, um, well, you can't really have this three cycle um, in, with an individual corner. You know, obviously, you can have it with two corners. And so you're not going to have to worry about the twist parity or anything like that. Um, so I recorded a macro of this. So let's, let's, uh, um, let's reset this puzzle, and I'll show you the macro. So the macro is exactly what I just did. It's our 54 move. Um, so I just this is setting the macro. So we're going to tell the macro to do this sticker, this sticker, this sticker. So that's the orientation that the macro has been defined in. Um, and we're applying the, the 54 move um, twist two corners sequence. So it does a, a, four, a three cycle of the four color pieces, then it twists one, then it undoes the three cycle, then it undoes the twist, so it changes the orientation of two of them. And this is the exact sequence that I just showed you. Okay, and it's about to undo the twist, and there we go. So there we go, so we did the twist of, of those two corners. Now. What happens if we twist this corner like this? Twist it, and then we undo the macro. So I'm about to apply the inverse of the macro. So it's going to untwist that corner. What is it going to do to this corner? So we're, uh, we're, we're applying the inverse. And you can, when you record a macro in this program, this is, this is Magic Cube 40 or MC40. When you record a macro in this program, you can apply it forward or backward. So that's really convenient. Um, and so it should, we know because we're applying it in reverse, it should untwist this corner that was over here. And it's about to be done. Well, OK, now it's about to be done. OK, so now it untwisted that corner. And now if we untwist this corner, um, everything is all solved. We've done 108 moves, and everything is all solved. So what happened? We, we did a twist on this axis and a twist on this axis. Then we did a twist on that axis again, and then we undid that twist, and then we undid that twist. And as you can see, it didn't really matter that we changed the orientation. It's because it already did a twist on this axis. So I'm actually going somewhere with this. So let me reset the puzzle. Now let me apply this macro. So this is the forward version of the macro again. So we're going to twist two four color corner pieces. Okay, there we go. Now, we know that it, well, if we un reply the reverse, it's going to do another twist in this axis and undo the twist in this axis. What happens if we put a twist and say this axis? Now, we can't do that because it moves that corner. So we're going to have to do a setup move first. So I'm going to take this corner right here, and I'm going to bring it. See, it's right there. 
Now it's right there. So here is our twisted corner. Now we already know there's a twist in this axis right here. We're going to put a twist in the yellow axis instead. Okay, now we got to undo our setup move. So now you can see that we put it back in place. We put the light blue, teal, yellow, orange piece back in place. It's sort of in a weird orientation. And this piece is still in place. It, it's, it has the wrong orientation, but we're about to undo that. So the, the teal, orange, purple, yellow piece. So now let's apply the inverse macro. So now we're going to untwist. Oh, did I? Uh, I think I did that wrong. Okay. Uh, I got it. Okay, now let me apply the. So we're going to untwist this. I got to apply the inverse macro here. And it should untwist this corner. What is it going to do to the other corner, though? What is it going to do to this corner? Well, first we're going to have to undo the, the twist uh, that we put in it, and then we'll have to see. OK, so this corner is now fixed. Now we have, to, we have to undo the twist that we did. So we have to bring it back into that position. And then we have to do that, and then put it back. And now we have a single four color corner on this puzzle, and its orientation is wrong, and all the rest of the puzzle is solved. So what's going on here? This piece actually has two twists in it. So instead of us twisting this corner and this corner, what we did was we twisted this corner and this corner. Then we changed this piece's orientation, and then we undid the twist in this corner, and it ended up putting a twist in this corner again. So this corner now has two twists in it. It has a twist on the teal axis, or no, excuse me, on the light blue axis, and a twist on the yellow axis. And so we know that the twist on the teal axis was applied first. And so we can see that. So you can see that the yellow piece was taken from this port spot and put right there because of a twist on the on the on the, the light blue axis here um, and then we put a twist in the, the yellow axis um, and so by doing that then you can see that the brown piece went there um, and then the light blue well it's so anyways it put two twists in the in this piece so this piece is almost in a um, sort of in an inverted state it already sort of looks like wrong side out um, so the yellow teal piece stickers have been swapped and the light blue orange stickers or brown stickers have been swapped too. Now, this might look like a parody situation. It might look like a weird twist situation. But as I've demonstrated in, in the construction of how to actually do this, um, you can see that it's just two twists in the same piece. And so if you have a macro that can do a twist in this, you know, in two four color pieces, this one and this one, then in doing a little bit of trickery, you should be able to then undo the twist in that one and apply a second twist in that one on a different axis. And so to recap, we to recap, we did a three cycle of the two color pieces using a simple one one commutator. We were able to change their orientation. Then we were able to build off of that to then three cycle these pieces because that piece is now isolated. So then we can do and then so that's our three cycle of the three color pieces and we were able to change their orientation by doing some little bit of trickery. Um, and now we were able to build off using a little three move Y part. We were able to put uh, excuse me that was a 40 rotate. Um, we were able to put this uh, four color corner piece, we were able to put it, or we were able to isolate it, and then replace it. And then we were able to undo our three cycle, and then we were able to undo our Y part. Oh, well, I didn't show that properly. Let me show the Y part again. So the Y part was uh, this. And then to undo it, do that. Um, and then we were able to figure out using a three cycle of the four the four color pieces we were able to figure out how to put a twist in them doing like something like that and then undoing our three cycle and then building off of that where we do two, a twist in two corners we were then able to put a two twists in a single four color corner piece and so 
Following that, if you solve this puzzle, you know, the, the, the one color centers here are already solved, then you can solve the two color pieces, then you can solve the three color pieces, then you can solve the four color pieces, and this puzzle will be solved. And you should, recommend, I highly recommend that you use the macro feature of this program. So you record a macro for these things, record a macro for changing the orientation, record a macro, you know, of the two color pieces, record a macro for the three color pieces, re record a macro for the three cycles, just, you know, spend an hour before you start solving this puzzle just sort of familiarizing yourself with it and making macros for it. And then you should be able to knock out a solve relatively quickly. I mean, I honestly, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I think the first time I solved this puzzle, I think it took me like 10 or 12 hours. Uh, and that was after the macros were already made. It took me like 10 or 12 hours to solve this thing. Um, and so if you find that it's taking you like 10 or 12 hours to, to solve it, um, well, uh, I, I, that's not surprising. It took me that long too. Now, if I created all the macros, I really only think this thing would take me like an hour. Um, but I understand it a lot better than, than when I originally solved it. And so I hope from my introductory video and from this video, you too will understand it very well and it won't take you like 10 hours to solve it. Hopefully it'll only take you like two or three. Good luck.